Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy, Nolan Hawkeye Anthony here, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic week, wherever you may be, and however you may be listening. We're back for another preview video, Iowa versus Northwestern, which we will get all up in and really dive into. Uh, it should be very interesting. Iowa, unfortunately, is on a two-game losing streak. Uh, losing back-to-back -back games by double digits. There's definitely some things to fix, uh, some things to work on. But I also want to say, there, at the beginning of this video, before I go anywhere, that last year Iowa lost two games in a row at the beginning of the season, and everyone, including myself, was very concerned and did not see even a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel. And as we know, Iowa won six straight and had it been a normal length of, of, uh, of a schedule, a normal season, Iowa, you could make the case that Iowa would have eventually wound up in the Big Ten championship. But either way, they finished in the top 15 after losing two in a row last year. So it is possible to get back on track and one thing I'm going to do in this video that I haven't done in previous preview videos is discuss the quarterback change controversy or the idea of the quarterback change and discuss some other areas that maybe some other Iowa fans are not uh, focusing on where Iowa is coming up drastically short. But before we do any of that, I want to mention going to 247hawkeye.com. That's 247hawkeye.com. The channel is looking for a sponsor. Preferably, I would take on uh, an Iowa business uh, as even though I live in California, obviously I have family in Iowa. And if I could, I would love to support uh, an Iowa business and, and uh, develop a relationship with, with some Iowa business. And I support, I support small businesses, plain and simple. I have no problem admitting that. Um, and uh, so that is that. I really hope you consider hitting that subscribe button. It really means a lot when you guys do that. We're so close to getting to a thousand subs. Uh, help me get there by hitting that subscribe button, support a fellow Hawkeye, uh, and uh, be sure to check out the pregame show and the postgame show every Saturday. And last but not least, if you want to donate to the show, I'll put the PayPal link in the description. And thank you to all y'all who have uh, donated uh, to this experience so far. And without further ado, let's get into this. So first things first, before we get in, before we even look at the team stats of Northwestern and Iowa and look at some pro football focus grades, which you guys seem to really enjoy, Let's talk about the Iowa quarterback position. Now, I've told you guys many, many times, especially on the uh, pregame show, that there's two main questions you need to ask yourself. And first and foremost, I am not a hashtag blame the quarterback guy. I don't do that, okay? Uh, football is a massive team sport that where there are so many things that can lead to an eventual loss that blaming the quarterback always is not super nuanced. And it's just like something that so many fans do that isn't always accurate. Okay. But the two questions that I have said needs to be asked because since last year for Spencer Petras and Alex Padilla, even though in my opinion, Iowa has a few backups, I don't even think Alex Padilla is of without a shadow of a doubt, the number one option to replace Petrus. But the rumors and the desire to change quarterbacks has gone back to last season with that. As you guys can see here, this funny uh, little meme here, Dolphins making quarterback change. Josh Rosen will start over Ryan Fitzpatrick versus Cowboys. And then at the bottom, it says, I plan on taking the defense of every team that faces the Dolphins in fantasy this season. So, but the two questions that need to be asked is number one, is it worth, okay, changing the quarterback position at the risk of losing the momentum that the starting quarterback has? 
Now, before Iowa lost two games, the answer was, in my opinion, a resounding no. As Spencer Petras was the most winningest Iowa quarterback at that time uh, in Iowa football history. I believe he had won 13 straight games, which is very impressive. I, I don't care what his stats are. At the end of the day, if you want to blame the quarterback for everything, then you also have to give the quarterback credit for a lot as well because it, it just doesn't really make sense if you're going to blame the quarterback for everything that goes bad, but then give that, that same quarterback very little praise uh, when positive things happen. But now after the two losses, I think obviously the answer is more in the middle. If not, no, uh, it, it, or excuse me. Yes, it, it is worth uh, possibly changing the quarterback or, or taking a look at a different option as Spencer Petras has lost two straight and the momentum has all but effectively died. Question number two is... Ultimately, does Iowa have a better option than Petrus? And it and the answer can't be well. It the the person is a little bit better, or so and so is a little bit better, or well, we just need to see because if the if whoever you're going to put in there is going to be the same, then it doesn't matter. You should just keep the quarterback that's in there for cohesion's sake, because if you're not going to get a better outcome uh, at the, as far as stats and, and production goes, then you just need to keep the guy in there for cohesion uh, sake. And this is where I am a little bit, a little bit more on the fence, because if we're being honest, Iowa fans, it's not like Alex Padilla lit it up in the, the training camp for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He did some good things, but so did Petrus. Petrus did some good things as well. Uh, and the other thing is when Padilla has been in the game for the Hawkeyes this year, it really hasn't been good. I don't know if you guys remember, but when he got in the game against Colorado State, he fell over two snaps in a row, which just made the offense look terrible. And here's the thing. I don't mean to make fun of Padilla, uh, Alex Padilla, guys. I, I really don't, okay? Uh, I'm just, I, I need to make the point so that when people decide to comment and say, no, 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 you're wrong, Nolan. Padilla is the answer. Petrus has got to go. He's got to go. That at least I make whatever case I'm making uh, decent, okay? Here are Padilla's stats, and I don't even think most Hawkeye fans are aware of Padilla's stats. And furthermore, the, one of the examples we have, there's two examples in Iowa football's history under Kirk Ferentz of changing the quarterback. We have Jake Christensen and Ricky Stanzi in 2008-2009, and we have C.J. Bethard and Jake Rudock. okay? And it, it, it's... It's kind of similar, but but not fully. The one thing I would say about Ricky Stanzi and C.J. Beathard is that there was ample evidence when, C you know, for example, when C.J. Beathard had that come from behind win against another Power Five team against Pitt, or Ricky Stanzi, I can't, you know, think of the uh, think of an exact uh, example off the top of my head right now, but the stats and the offense did improve. As soon as Stancy Stancy got in there, and they did, Iowa did give Jake Christensen another shot uh, after looking at Stancy. But the, but the evidence that Stancy produced was so strong that they went with him. Now, with Padilla, I don't think you can say that. Uh, here are his stats. He, last year, or excuse me, yeah, last year he was one for two, and this year Alex Padilla. And get ready for this, Iowa fans. He is 4 of 14 with a 28.6% completion percentage, 4.4 yards per attempt with a rating of 
Now, here are Spencer Petrus' stats. Last year, he was 140 for 245 with for a 57% completion percentage, 1,569 yards, nine tubs, and five INTs. And this year, he's 128 of 219 with a 58.4% uh, uh, completion percentage. Come on, Nolan. Nine touchdowns and six interceptions with a quarterback rating of 121.2. Not terrible. It, it really isn't. It's not terrible. Now, what I'm going to tell you guys, and overall, this is an Iowa versus Northwestern preview video rather than a video about where Iowa is going wrong. But I will say at this point, I do think regardless that it is time for Iowa to take a good hard look at if they potentially have a better option at quarterback. And that's what I'll say. I think it's that simple. Now, the last thing I'll say on this, on, on all of this is that Iowa has way more problems offensively than just the quarterback. Number one, Tyrone Tracy and the, and not necessarily him specifically, but the guys that I expected that other people have expected to step up, simply put, have not. They've been very, very average this year. And that bums me out because I really was expecting them to take a huge, huge step forward. Hawk fans, I want you to take a good hard look at this and realize that the three starting wide receivers for the Hawkeyes at the beginning of the year, guys who have Ample experience, Nico Regani, a.k.a. Nico Raggiani, Charlie Jones, and Tyrone Tracy are not even top 300 in the wide receiver grades or rankings in pro football focus. And they have grades below a 65. Keegan Johnson and Arlen Bruce obviously are doing much better. Keegan Johnson has a ranking of 261. Arlen Bruce doesn't have a high enough uh, snap count uh, in order to be ranked, but he is the highest graded Iowa wide receiver. And now I asked this question last week, is Brian Ferentz actually going to do what he says in the press conferences, which is trying to give his playmakers the ball more? And until that answer is yes, I don't know if, the, regardless of who's that quarterback, if this situation can be sh uh, shored up and point number two is the run game has not lived up to the preseason hype one iota guys i don't know if the answer is that the offensive line needs to get better but but or or if it's more on the running backs or it's more on the offensive coordinator being so one dimensional, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's it, the answer is probably that it's all of the above. OK, but either way, at some point, you need to look at the players on the field and hold them accountable and say it's time to produce. And the bottom line is here. Tyler Goodson just has not been as good as he was last year. Now, can he improve this season? Sure, of course he can. And, and I think he's a really, really good player. I, I really do. But here are the rankings and the grades of the Iowa uh, running backs. And I will show you guys the grades of the Iowa offensive linemen as well. But the point is, and, and this is the last little sentence I will make on the matter, before getting into the more general preview is that the answer is not as simple as Iowa needs to change the quarterback. Do they need to take a look at it and decide if there's a better option? Yes, they do. But is it clear cut that, that everything about Iowa's two game losing streak is Fetcher Peters' fault? No, I don't think so. So here is a look at the big 10 standings, uh, everybody. And I do want to make the point, and I already said this at the beginning of the video, it is possible that things change and that Iowa wins out and a team loses here and a team loses there and Iowa finishes in the top 10 and has a great rest of the season. It's possible. It is. So I don't want to say it's not possible. Minnesota is atop of the Big Ten with a four and one um, uh, 
record in the Big Ten, uh, Purdue, Wisconsin, and Iowa all are tied at three and two with uh, Purdue having the tie with Purdue and Wisconsin having a tiebreaker over Iowa. And if there's one thing that does suck about all this is that those two teams have a tiebreaker over Iowa. And I guarantee you that this is going to come down to the wire and Iowa is going to really wish if, if they end up being burnt by this, that they had beaten one of these two teams at the very least. But as you guys can see down here at the very bottom, Northwestern is one and four. Let's take a look at their schedule, shall we? Or their previous games that they have played. Iowa versus Northwestern, by the way, is at 4 p.m. Pacific time, I believe. So I think it starts at 6 central time. Uh, So there you guys have it. Uh, And that should be interesting to say the least. Let's look at Northwestern's schedule here. They lost to Michigan State. They got trounced by Michigan State. Uh, They beat Indiana State. They lost to Duke. They beat Ohio. They got thrashed by Nebraska, who is also at the bottom of the Big Ten. And I I never tire of saying that. Uh, And they beat Rutgers. They got thrashed by Michigan. And they got thrashed by Minnesota. And I actually picked Northwestern to upset uh, Minnesota. And I, I, it is, it is important to note that early in the season, Minnesota lost to a Mac school and, and the whole internet went crazy over Minnesota losing to a Mac school. Now they are number one in the big 10. So it is critical to understand that as long as Iowa finishes strong, uh, anything is possible here the rest of the season. All right, pro football focus time. I showed you guys the wide receiver grades already and the running back grades already. And here are uh, the Iowa quarterback grades. Spencer Petras is by far the highest graded Iowa quarterback. Uh, And he is ranked as the 64th best quarterback in the country, which, which is significantly higher, might I add, than any wide receiver and any half running back that Iowa has. Alex Padilla, who who a bunch of Iowa fans have said is the answer, has a grade of 58.3, and maybe he is the answer. I don't know. But right now, his grade is pretty low. Uh, and Deuce Hogan, unfortunately, unfortunately, is not much better. Here are the tight end grades. And, and I also did want to say at the when I was talking about the quarterbacks that at this point, the Iowa offense, Uh, is doing so poorly, and Brian Ferentz has given so many chances for his older starting guys to get on track that it is time. Uh, The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And if Brian Ferentz sticks with the same guys, uh, that is what that will mean, is that he is, well, insane. (laughs) So... Uh, this either way, I don't see what the problem is with putting some of the younger guys in there as the older, more experienced guys aren't getting it done. It can't get much worse than what they uh, are doing, but either way, Sam Laporta, again, just is not having as great of a season as I expected, uh, you know, uh, compared to some of the other tight ends. And I mean, if you really think about it, guys, Sam Laporta, has been a starting tight end for Iowa for three years, for three years now. Uh, And, you know, it's, he's just not as explosive as we've seen Noah Fant, TJ Hawkinson, you know, George Kittle, guys like that. And, and I get it. Those guys are one in a million players. I get it. But Sam Laporta is still very talented nonetheless. Uh, And Luke uh, Lachey or Luke Lackey has a grade of 55.4. So those are the tight ends. Here are the center rankings. Tyler Linderbaum, still number one, baby, still number one. Uh, And that is good. Let's see if Northwestern has a center uh, in the, because usually I show um, uh, the grades of of the opposing team uh, and their top player. I'm not seeing Northwestern's 
center here in the Sam Garrick. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Garrick from Deep Space Nine, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but Sam Garrick uh, of Northwestern is number 137 uh, at the center position. And here are the ratings of the Iowa guards. You have Justin Britt as a top 15 guard in the country, Kyler Schott as the 34th best guard, Cody Entz as the 40th, and Connor Colby as the 41st. I think it's pretty obvious that the problems on the offensive line are on the outside. It's the tackles because all of Iowa's four interior, or excuse me, five interior guys who get a lot of playing time are pretty good. They're doing okay. And the interesting thing, and I pointed this out last week, is that uh, Cody Enns was actually thought of to potentially play tackle. And I and Connor Colby also played tackle uh, in high school. So I wonder if potentially Iowa is thinking about making a change there. And, and, and regardless, just getting the, the most talented guys on the offensive line, regardless of where they play their, their best football. Northwestern does have a pretty good tackle in Peter Skoromsky, which is good. Peter is definitely a top 50 uh, tackle, according to Pro Football Focus. And here are Iowa's uh, tackles. Let's take off the minimum snap count. Tyler Ellsbury has the highest grade. Uh, I, I am quite surprised by this, that his grade is so high, but Mason uh, the, the red shirt freshman Mason Richmond has a grade of 62.4. Josh Volk has a grade of 61.2. Uh, Nick Day Young has a grade of 59.3. And Jack Plum, it's not much better with a grade of a 57.6. Just not good enough, guys. Not good enough at all, especially for a team like Iowa, who is a run first team. And that is one point that I, again, I had a button, a bunch of points to make with the Iowa inefficiencies, but it is important to note that Iowa is a run first team. Uh, if, if anything, they're a balanced team, but if they're going to pick one or the other, it's always the run as opposed to the pass. And so for me, it's much more concerning with what is supposed to be an advantage of Iowa's when it is not doing what it is capable of uh, in production. Northwestern's top-ranked uh, corner is Cameron Mitchell, who is ranked 117. So maybe Iowa can take advantage of that. Uh, it doesn't look like uh, Northwestern has an excellent uh, uh, DB unit, so hopefully they can take advantage of that. Here are Iowa's corners. Obviously, Riley Moss is ranked as the seventh best uh, corner in the country, and largely that's because you know he's missed two games in a row. Matt Hankins is tenth. Uh, you know, one thing that has slowed down for the Hawkeyes is their takeaways, and maybe that is because Riley Moss has been out. One thing that definitely stunk is Terry Roberts getting injured, especially after waiting and waiting and waiting for his opportunity. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, and But Jermari Harris was graded out at a 70, so he obviously did okay in his first start last week. Uh, and here are the other grades uh, for the Iowa uh, DBs. It's pretty on, uh, obvious, guys, why Northwestern is struggling so much because usually what is the strength for them is their defense. And their highest graded linebacker is Chris Bergen, who is 323rd uh, in the country, ac according to Pro Football Focus here. And here are Iowa's linebackers right here. Uh, again, you know, they're doing fine. Justin Jacobs is 67th. Jack Campbell, 74th. Seth Benson is, is struggling a little bit, uh, a, a little bit. Uh, I think maybe something Phil Parker should take a look at is maybe trying to get Justin, because right now Justin Jacobs is the guy who is the odd man out, and I think he might be too good to keep off the field uh, like Iowa is, uh, especially for Seth Benson. Uh, but either way, here are the linebackers. All right, guys, let's take a look at Iowa versus Northwestern team stats. I changed my mind, changed my mind. I did want to give you guys one more little group of rankings here. This is Iowa's interior defensive line. And 
there's room for improvement. There really is. And if there's one issue with the Iowa defense, it would be penetration. Uh, th- th- or Yeah, the defense. The defensive line, outside of Zach Van Volkenberg, there really isn't a ton of pressure, a ton of penetration. And I, I do think that that is something Phil Parker is going to have to take a look at. So here's Northwestern, guys. They are 74th uh, at in the country in rushing offense. That's what we're going to take a look at first, offense, and then defense. Northwestern is 74th. And we still haven't even found Iowa yet here. They are definitely (laughs) on the third page here. And there they are. Number 117 in the country in rushing offense. A team like Iowa who prides themselves on running the football is number 117 in the country. Let's see what they are averaging. 2.88 yards per carry come on man (laughs) no god no god please no 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 (laughs) my uh feelings exactly it's just not good enough, guys. Here are the uh, passing stats, team stats. Iowa is 104th in the country, which is actually higher than the rushing offense. The rushing offense for Iowa is number 117. So it's just not good enough. Northwestern is not much better at number 108. Let's just see what they're averaging just for shites and gigs. 186.5 for Iowa and for Northwestern, 182.2. This really is going to be a a game uh, of the worst offenses in the country. This is total offense here. Northwestern is 106. I mean, think about it, guys. As bad as Northwestern has been, their offense is still better than the Iowa Hawkeyes as far as total offense goes. Iowa is number 124. That that just doesn't cut it. It it really doesn't. It's it's not good enough. Uh, Iowa is averaging 291.5 yards per game. That simply, it's just, it's not good enough. I don't know what else to say. It's not good enough. It is time for Iowa to look at the entire offense and say, who do we have on this roster that we can put in and give us a spark that we can go to? And that, and they, that's at, at the very least where they need to start. Here are the rushing uh, defensive totals. Iowa is 12th in the country with the 12th best rushing defense in the country. Obviously, it went back a little bit uh, due to, well, Wisconsin being able to run the football as well as they did against Iowa. And Northwestern is number 126. So maybe this is the week that Iowa can get back on track, as especially in the run game, as Northwestern's run defense is virtually non-existent. Iowa is ninth in total defense, uh, as you guys can see here, ninth. uh, And again, Northwestern, not very good this year defensively. 98th in the country. This is by far the worst defense Iowa will have faced, uh, at the very least, in the Big Ten. So again, maybe this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Iowa's offense to get back on track. So here we go, guys. Here is the last thing we're going to go over. This is the matchup predictor by uh, the Football Power Index. Iowa is an 81.3% uh, favorite in this game. Uh, and here are the individual stats. Uh, Ryan Hils- Hilsinki, uh has 764 yards, three touchdowns to one interception. The leading rusher for, no- uh, for Northwestern is... I, I'm not sure what his first name is, but his last name is Hole with 750 yards, five touchdowns. It's better than Tyler Goodson. Tyler Goodson has 613 yards for five tubs. And the leading receiver for Northwestern is Robinson Jr. with 425 yards, two tubs. Uh, whereas for Iowa, it is Sam Laporta with 376 yards and two tubs. And Iowa is still their 12-point favorite uh, in this game which is definitely uh, pretty sizable. Obviously, it is very sizable. To, uh, the betting line is minus 450. Here are the team stats. The bottom line is Iowa needs to get back on track. They need 
to start running the football. What Wisconsin did is what Iowa needs to do. Just just stubbornly pound the football, pound the football, pound the football and see what happens. Yes, maybe they, yes, they do need to take a look at the quarterback position, but in my opinion, there are far bigger issues such as the run game and the offensive line and the wide receiver group. They need to take a look at that and get some of their guys who have a potential, a big play ability and just any playability uh, to get in there. Uh, they need to take some hard looks at this. Uh, But I will say with all of that in mind, I do think that this is exactly what the doctor ordered. If it wasn't Northwestern, I would feel really, really good about this game. This is not the Northwestern that you were accustomed to last year. For whatever reason, Iowa finds ways to struggle against them all the time. But like I said, I do think this is exactly what the doctor ordered as the Northwestern defense is not good. They are very, very poor. Uh, Iowa's defense should do just fine against this Northwestern offense. So I'm going to pick Iowa to get back on track and win this game 31, even though I have zero evidence that they'll score 31 points, 31 to 18. I think this is going to be a good, solid win for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you guys go to 247hawkeye.com and consider hitting that subscribe button. It really means a lot when you guys do that. Uh, and last but not least, be sure to check in for the post game and the pregame show. I am looking for a sponsor for the channel, preferably uh, an Iowa based company, uh, which would uh, be great. But if you don't feel like subscribing or anything like that, like comment, I try and comment to uh, towards all your guys comments uh, and really uh, communicate with you. That's why I started this channel so we could all hang out together. Uh, but uh, and 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 enjoy the ups and downs of Iowa Hawkeye sports. And last but not least, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. And facts or feelings, your feelings don't matter. Love y'all. Go Hawks. Bye.